welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where we are here in the Blacksmith's Guild to do our Blacksmith Truck Quest, Class Quest, whatever you want to call it, for Stormblood. Spitale, a missive from the Far East. Desiree, ain't today shaking out to be a mighty fine day? First I had a promising letter from a potential recruit from the Far East, and not long after you show up. I, I know. Couldn't believe it myself when I learned that someone from beyond the five seas wanted to take up an apprenticeship at our humble establishment. But sure as day, that's what it says on on this here paper. Forge Master Britail, I'm writing to you today to express my desire to learn more about your guild and the blacksmithing techniques you employ. I'm currently preparing to depart for Limsalominza and should be arriving shortly after this reaches you. Um... On second thought, perhaps promising wasn't the right word. He don't expressly state he's looking to join or even give us a name for that matter. Uh, well, at least the enthusiastic beggar, which is a lot more than can be said for half my crew at this moment. We've been a, a bit short-handed, so everyone's been working from sun up to sundown. But dead on their feet this way. That's why I'll be sending you to escort our mysterious new recruit back here. I know, I know. The letter ain't much to go on. I reckon if you snoop around the docks for long enough. You'll come across our friend sooner or later. Madam. Madam, please. Um, by the looks of it, you're from the Blacksmith's Guild. You've been sent to collect me, have you not? You know this girl? She's been stirring up a great deal of trouble, and I'm of half a might to take her into custody for attempted assault. Earlier this man accosted her when she st stepped off a boat. Rather than telling him to bugger off or approach a nearby officer for help, however, she responded by pulling out a sword and slashing wildly at him. Huh? Luckily I was close enough to intervene and prevent anyone from coming to harm. I've been questioning them since, but I haven't been able to get a peep out of the girl, and this fool besides her won't stop spouting lies. You stopped me without just cause and refused to let me go, even after I explained that I have somewhere near need to be. There was nothing left for me to say, least of all to a churl like you. Churl? Listen here, young lady. While it, that may be a suitable word to describe this ruffian, I'm no such thing. I'm a yellow jacket, keeper of a peace and defender of Lim Salominsa. First, I'm nearly stabbed now to disservice me with your ugly words. All I did was shower a pretty girl with compliments, but sadly weren't this abuse. That's all you did, is it now? Perhaps next time you should use your mouth to do some of that complimenting instead of your hands. If there is a next time, that is. Truth be told, the only reason I was even here to save your sorry ass was because I came to issue you, you with a warning. We've received a flood of complaints regarding your unscrupulous behavior. I, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, sh sh she tried to kill me. While I turn the girl the sword over to you, I ask that you keep this thing well out of her reach. She may have had her reasons, but I will not tolerate a repeat of this incident. Are we clear? That's simply a blade I keep on hand for self-defense. It's a rubbish weapon, and really, you can keep it. I will, however, have you know that that is no ordinary sword. Rather, it's a katana, the traditional weapon of the Far East. No, wait. I have an even better idea. You can present my katana to Forge Master Britail. While by no means one of my better creations, it should prove sufficient to demonstrate my skill to him. Now then, let us not waste any more time. Please leave the way to the Blacksmith's Guild. A katana wrought by her own hand. It seems she's a blacksmith of exceptional skill. She claims it's rubbish, but that's a finer weapon than any I've ever wielded. For all her talent, though, that girl's going to be a handful. Ritter's in charge over at the Blacksmith's Guild, isn't he? My sincerest sympathies to him. Alright, back to the guild. Didn't manage to find him, did you? It was a bit of a long shot to begin with, I suppose. Um, you have something you want to show me? 
unadorned katana. A katana for, of self-defense forged by a strong-willed Far Eastern girl you encounter at the Luminous and Fairy Docks. Katana, certainly a fine make. I'd say it's right up with some of the stuff me better, so maybe scan Barnard. Where did it come from? For my personal collection, of course. Apologies, I lost sight of Desiree now our way here. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Seke, aspiring swordsmith from Kugane. Watch Master Brittle, it's an honor to finally meet you in person. As stated in my letter, I have come to Eorzea, but I might be placed under your tutelage. Uh, not to be rude or anything, but you say you're looking to become a swordsmith. Uh, why come all this way? Surely there are places where you're from that better suited to owning your talents. Uh, a certain someone has banned me from taking up the hammer at any of the local forges. While I'm certainly thought doing so would deal a crushing blow to my career, it's only served to strengthen my resolve. So, you're looking to join our guild then? Not quite. I would like to simply study here. I believe learning the techniques you employ and applying them to my craft will allow me to expand my repertoire and evolve as a swordsmith. Alas, you can't simply waltz in here, take all our secrets and wal then waltz back out without giving us something in return. But sir, you must understand I simply cannot become a permanent member of your guild. Please, please, can you make an exception just this once? I did not travel the high seas to leave here empty-handed. Surely there must be a way. <sighs> You're not making this easy. I suppose we could make a trade of sorts. Where you share your smithing techniques with us in exchange for your studies here. Yes, I'd be more than happy to agree to that. Now that that's settled, I shall be taking my leave to search for accommodation. Fortune of Sabrita, Desiree, until we meet again. Well, wasn't she something? <laughs> yeah, I nearly stepped the man on the harbor. Starting up trouble right off a boat, eh? Why is it I'm stuck by uh, the uh, sudden urge to take a trip to the ranch and drown me save an ale? Because that's what you always do. Ah, uh, but maybe she won't be so bad. We simply got off on the wrong foot, is all. Or at least I hope so. Now, Forge Master Britta stares at you like a shipwrecked man who has just spotted land. Desiree, it's been absolutely. It's been absolute hell ever since that fry stamped shrew you dragged back from the docks set up shop at our guild. From a crack of dawn to sundown, she prowls the floor looking to find faults with every one of me Smitty's works. I warned her a thousand times over that such disparaging remarks will not be tolerated, but will she listen? No. Instead, she'll storm off in a half and then return with even more bitter words on her tongue. Please, you got to go and talk some sense into her. She's like to be at Anchor Yard, where she always goes to cool down. Okay, Saka. You've come here because that bonehead sent you after me, right? Well, I have you know that whatever he says, I do not intend to be more supportive of a smithies. Every single point I brought up has been valid. You have some excellent smiths, really you do. However, everyone is so focused on when their next commission is due that they have lost sight of what's important. No one here has any passion or desire to improve. They're all dead on the inside. In Hingashi, swordsmiths are taught to strive for excellence, to push boundaries. We dedicate our lives to see that each weapon we make surpasses the last. Katana are the favorite weapon of the samurai, warriors who stake their lives on protecting the peace of our lands. Only the finest of blades are worthy of being wielded by these men and women. 
It is for this reason swordsmiths dedicate their entire lives to growth and perfecting their art. I had thought all artisans engaged in metal working were similarly devoted to their craft. Observing how your guilt is one, however, has made me realize I was wrong. Forgemaster Bristol would have his most gifted craftsmen carry out the most mundane tasks, all so you might fulfill customer orders. I traveled here from Kugana because everyone is of the opinion that this is one of the best blacksmith's guilds. Truthfully, I'm disappointed. Your organization is so stagnant. Surely you must see it too? Every day we improve with these mundane tasks. No, this is all wrong. Blacksmiths cannot refine their skills by mindlessly repeating the same tasks day in day out. Your guilt needs to change. And I'm going to prove it to you. Oh my. Master. I thought I told you to go and smooth things over with her. Instead of returning calm and composed, she storms in here with a murderous glee in her eyes, saying she wants to challenge me guilt. It's me against one of you, she says. You're to assist you're to assign both of us to the next order you will receive and the smithy who makes for better item as a winner. Uh, so that's what it all was about. But perhaps I'm looking at this the wrong way. This is a perfect opportunity for us for you to put her in her place. Yes, if you were to win this for us, she has no choice but to back down. <laughs> and as luck would have it, the latest order that came in is from two people you know personally. The down of a wench, waiting to discuss the details of what they have you make. Stack has already gone ahead, so I'd hurry if I were you. Speak with a client. So wh who do we have as a client? Louise! And the Heaven's Ward quests. Desiree, to think that Master Britta would send you of all people to us? Why, today must be our lucky day! This was the first true break I have been afforded since being promoted to Apprentice Squire, and I decided to come here to thank your guild master in person for his services. But that's not all. Lately, each new mission I'm dispatched on takes me further from the city than the last, and I'm forced to leave Bremondane on his own for extended periods of time. He, however, has not a weapon with which to defend himself in my absence. As such, I would have a sword forged for him. What a contest! Uh, well, I'm not averse to the idea, this is the first I'm hearing of it. In fact, the girl you mentioned, Seca, never came this way. Hmm, mayhap she thought the general request we sent to your guild was enough that's already begun working on a blade? Well, whatever the case may be, I look forward to seeing you work your usual magic. Now for Madame, tell Desiree what kind of weapon you would have her make. Mistress Klingo, it's a pleasure to see you again. As for the blade, I believe a short sword would best suit me. I've grown weak in my old age and anything heavy is like to be more a hindrance than help. Yes, uh, the lighter of a short sword the better. We've already paid the fee for your services to Master Brittle and have, in addition, agreed to provide you with materials. While we are still far from wealthy, money is not as tight as it once was. If there's anything at all you should require, Please do not hesitate to ask. Oh, and since this is a competition, once you've finished, perhaps you should take the blade to Forge Master Brittle. After you received his approval, we'll praise the two weapons side by side. And unlike previous um, quests, so in ARR and Heavensward, Stormblood and Onward, you get what you need to craft the item for the quest. You do not need to go to the market board and buy stuff or craft it yourself with other crafting professions or stuff like that. And I see stuttering on the recording. Hope that isn't too bad. Anyway, level base, a special recipe, story, class quest, featherlight short sword. Lady Finish, it better be nothing less than perfect, Desiree. If we lose this, she'll become even more intolerable. 
and we are scored as doomed. Um, ah, I missed as fine a short sword as any I've seen. We're light and easy to handle. The girl has not a cat in hell's chance of winning this. Now let's bring her and our client in, shall we? Both are magnificent weapon, but one is head and shoulders above the other. Mr. Klingor, your handiwork never fails to impress me. It would be my honor to wield your blade. B but why? Her sword is flimsy and weak compared to mine. Added to that, mine has a superior edge and is m much more aesthetically pleasing. Madam, as you can see for yourself, I'm but a frail old man. Yours, while beautiful, is far too heavy for me. I'm no blacksmith, but I know enough to say these blades are of co a comparable quality in durability and sharpness both. If you were to take into account the needs of a wielder, however, Desiree's is far superior. But this is not fair, our clients mean anyone but these two. My sword would have won. I understand you're dismayed by the results, but your words are unbecoming of an artisan. It's our clients who decide if our weapons are worthy of them, not the other way around. If you can't bear defeat with a bit of dignity, I suggest you look into changing professions. You'll never grow as a craftsman with that attitude, much as surpass Desiree here. If you don't mind, Femadane and I will be taking Desiree's short sword and le leaving then. Before you go, please allow me to apologize. It is as Forge Master Butter says. I realize now I did not take any of your needs into consideration and resulted in me presenting with you an item unworthy of your attention. As Smitty needs a great range of skills so that he might tailor his products to accommodate the needs of his customer. Every task, however boring and routine, helps to expand this repertoire. If that doesn't suit you, perhaps you should look into other guilds. Forgemaster Brittle, thank you. Your wise words have opened my eyes and allowed me to see the faults in my way. I'm terribly sorry for my earlier behavior. Nothing of the sort will happen again during the course of my studies here. Studies? Here? Surely you'd prefer to go elsewhere. Not at all. I'm quite certain whatever those other places have to offer will not even come close to what I can gain by observing Mistress Desiree. By what terrible stroke of fate did she end up at our guild? <sighs> I thought for sure she'd leave after losing to him. She is certainly a spirited girl. While her determination to succeed is her greatest strength, it is also currently her greatest weakness. Perhaps if she were to learn to be more receptive to what others have to say, that could change. I'm going to have to go and break the news. She'll be staying to the other smitties. Desiree, don't go anywhere here, yeah? <laughs> and Louise laughs at <laughs> his dismay. Blood ties. Desiree, thanks to winning the competition, Sack has become surprisingly bearable of late, and things have been oddly peaceful. That's not to say, however, that you can rest on your oars just yet. Not too soon before you arrived, we received a rather peculiar request. It's from a man in Kugana named Shinto. He's asking that our best smithy forge him a weapon. This seems pretty standard, right? Well, it's not. It came with one very interesting condition. He asked that we not mention a word of this to Seca. Curious, ain't it? Why does he want to remain anonymous, and moreover, how does he know the girl is here? While I don't have the answer to either of those questions, there's one thing I know for certain. 
You're our best smitty. Our client should be arriving soon. So you best hurry to the docks. Any question? Good. Now off you go. And at the docks. Shinto. You must be the blacksmith Forcemaster Brittle promised me. Thank you for coming. Before I make an official request of you, however, please answer me this. Have you ever made a katana before? Yes. Excellent. Then you are a woman with experience and one which I can confidently entrust with this. What you hold in your hands is a hunk of rusted iron. I would like for you to forge a heavy uchigatana using this. Ah yes, the look of a skeptic. You do not think it a worthwhile endeavor? I agree, it's far from ideal. Had my savings not been lost to unexpected expenses along the way, perhaps I would have been able to provide you with better me metal to work with, but alas, this is all I can currently offer. That said, I do not think it by any means an impossible task, especially not for one of your purported talent. If you find yourself struggling, however, feel free to appeal to your colleagues for assistance. From what I understand, one of them is quite knowledgeable on the art of making katana. Be advised, however, not to mention my name should you choose to receive advice from this particular individual. Okay, she is again at the... Desiree, what brings you here? A hunk of rusted iron. A brutal lump of iron bestowed upon you by your client Shinto, with which you are expected to forge a katana. You have been tasked with forging an uchi katana from this rubbish? Even the realm's greatest masters would struggle to do so with iron this poor. What idiot would ask such an outrageous thing of you? If a client has asked that you protect their identity, I suppose you must oblige your riches. Still, this is absurd. There's so many impurities in this metal that any blade forged from it will be extremely brittle. Should the katana shatter during battle, the wielder's life will be forfeit. To preserve what little durability is present in these brittle hunks, we must refrain from folding the metal too many times. As such, you best make a heavy uchi katana. While the rust appears to be overwhelming, I think we have enough workable iron to make a full blade. Take half. I shall load onto the rest in case we need to try again. Now, this is the one thing that is a bit absurd with uh, um, you get materials uh, for the quest. She just said, we barely have enough to make it work. Here, take half. It should be enough. Huh? And to Shinto. Okay, so you've returned. Have you finished the Uchigatana that I requested? This blade, it's so rough hewn, it does not even come close to matching the skill of even the lesser swordsmiths of the Far East. Or at least, that is what I would say had I provided you with decent materials to work with. As it stands, the fact you managed to craft a working Uchi Katana from the iron I gave you shows me that you're an artisan of surpassing skill. I have witnessed firsthand that your reputation is well founded. Tell Master Brutal I'm satisfied with your performance. So, apparently that was a test. So please, I will do anything you assign to me without any complaints this time, I promise. Calm down, calm down. Thank the builder you're here. The bloody girl won't stop. She's been chasing me around the shop all day saying, please sir, give me more work, or please sir, I need to practice forever to become as good as this way. It's driving me mad. I believe I may have a solution for that. Desiree, thank you for humoring my earlier request. Blacksmiths who are as talented and professional as you are hard to come by. 
Ah, but before that, Forgemaster Brittle, I believe we have not yet had the pleasure to meet in person. I am Shinto, master of Gugana's largest blacksmith forge. But, father, w what are you doing here? I'm here to take you home. Time and again I have told you that you will never be good enough to become my apprentice. Saka, you must clear your head of these foolish notions. We will be going now. You have caused these people and me enough trouble as it is. While I'm not normally one to involve myself in such things, I think you're being a bit too hard on your daughter. Shouldn't you be supporting her dreams instead of tearing them down? She simply does not have what it takes to become a swordsmith. It's time she realizes this and looks to pursuing something better suited to her talents, or lack thereof. Saka, I presume you saw Desiree's Ochigatana? While well, made from a heap of rusted scraps, it demonstrated a skill that far exceeds anything I've seen from you. To think the woman does not even have a fraction of the knowledge you do. A decade's worth of practice has amounted to nothing. For you to lecture your daughter on her behavior is one thing, but I will not have you putting her down and worse, using Desiree to do it. Seka may still have a ways to go before she's a master, but she's got talent and puts in a great deal of effort. I don't know who you think you are, but even if you happen to be the finest swordsmith to ever have lived, it still doesn't give you the right to tell a person to abandon their dreams. Forgemaster. Setting up people for failure with hollow praise may be your way of doing things, but it's not mine. Seka, come. I will allow you a few days to come to terms of this. Know, however, that should you disobey me again, you shall be disowned. Father or not, great swordsmith or not, I don't see why you'd ever want to be an apprentice to such a sour bas- <coughs> Man, wouldn't you prefer to study under someone who believed in your potential? I grew up watching him work, pounding, pouring, and heating metal with a single-minded focus. Despite his numerous faults as a person, he's an extraordinary swordsmith, and I hope to one day become just as good as him. Alas, if you really feel that strongly about it, we'll help you. The two of us, we may have got off on the wrong foot, but it's nothing we can't put right starting now. Together, we think of a way to prove to your father that you're worthy of studying under him. You would really do that for me? Thank you. Thank you so very much. Forge Master Britta, I must apologize. I was wrong about you. After seeing you stand up to my father, I don't know, you are rather chivalrous, brave and kind. Rather chevalious, brave, and kind, huh? I suppose you didn't see me in such favorable light before this one. <laughs> uh, but on to more important matters. That's way, as each takes some time to think of ways we might assist the girl and reconvene once we do. You learned manipulation. Temper, temper. Um. Ah, that's the way. There you are. Since we last met, I've been giving a lot of thought as to how we made a sister and winning her father's approval. And there's one thing that strikes me as strange. While she's by no means a first-rate artisan, she's also not nearly so bad a smithy as her old man would have us believe. So why is he trying so hard to convince us she never amount to anything? Mutation tells me he's hiding something, it's up to you to find out what. I saw him wandering through West Hawker's alley earlier. With any luck, he should still be there. Okay, Hawker's alley. I swear, these leg spikes my recording shows must be limsa. It's not nearly as bad anywhere else. Or well, it's today, I don't know. 
but I suspect Limsa. Just how full the place is. You want me to know what will convince me of Saka's potential as a swordsmith? You are an odd one, to be so gifted and yet so humble as to treat a mediocre craftsman like my daughter as an equal. To answer your question, nothing will persuade me to take her on as an apprentice. What she lacks is something far more fundamental than skill. While I'm certain Master Brittle has sent you here in hopes of learning more than what I just told you, that's all I'm willing to say on the subject. So not skill, but probably an attitude problem? So it is as I suspected then. It's not the girl's skill Chinto doesn't approve of. His secretiveness is quite curious though, isn't it? Where that he didn't care for his daughter, you have no qualms about divulging the whole truth. Mayhap his distant demeanor is but a mask. That, however, is a discussion for another day. Now I've been observing how Saka works for a while now and learn how we might help her improve. From what I've seen, she's got a great deal of talent, but her clunky tools prevent her from displaying the full extent of her skills. I believe that her hampered dexterity is the missing fundamental to which Shinto refers. It should be an easy thing to fix. All we need is to provide her with a new set of swelter tools. That said, forging custom-made implements ain't easy and there's only two people I trust to do the job right. But that's it, what do you say? You make her a nice hammer and I take care of the rest. Runwolf should be able to supply you with what you need. You can find him where he normally is, so bad reception. So, Randwolf, been a while. The two of you are making a new set of tools for the girl. <laughs> so the old bugger does have a chevalier streak in him. Alright, this should be all you need. But feel free to come back if it's not enough. Let's see it then. You've outdone yourself yet again, Desiree. Maybe I have to ask you to forge me a new hammer once all of this has been resolved. Between the two of us, we should now have a complete set of tools. I'll let you have the honor of giving them to the girl. If she's not down in the workshop, you should be able to find her at the anchor yet. There's a way I... I'm pathetic. I do not deserve to be called a smith. Forge Master Brittle invested so much time and effort in helping me achieve my dream, yet everything I make is, is rubbish. I'm undeserving of his teachings and his kindness. My father is a distinguished artisan in Kugane. To gain his recognition would require that I craft an exceptional katana. This whole time I've been thinking how exactly I might bring such a blade into existence. But the harder I think, the more I'm overcome with panic. To make matters worse, I cannot get Forge Master Brittle's face out of my head. Ever since he stood up for me against my father, I find myself unable to think straight and the flush rises in my cheeks whenever he's around. He has begun to dominate my thoughts and even my dreams. I do not know what has gotten into me. <sighs> my apologies, it seems I've gone off on a tangent. There was something you wanted to show me? Having a bit on cr of a crush on the guildmaster? Forge Master Brittle and you made these for me? It never occurred to me that your tools can make a difference. Unlike my current ones, these feel so light and sleek. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful gift. I cannot wait to test them out. The girl flew in here a quarter bell ago and began pounding up a storm. But I knew the tools would make her happy, I didn't realize they'd make her that happy. There's a look, it's magnificent, is it not? I made this using the tools you gave me. I 
only used them to put on the finishing touches, but what an astounding difference they have made. They're so much easier to handle than my old ones. Some of the things I used to struggle with now almost feel like second nature. Thank you. To think that you and Forge Master Brittle cared deeply enough about me to design such a wonderful set of tools for me. Saka, it seems that once again you have gone against my wishes. This katana is abysmal. Did you think crafting the shoddy sword would somehow change my mind? No, father. This katana was not made with the intent of showcasing my skill. However, that does not make it any less valuable. This blade, it represents my determination and marks the first step in my journey to become the best swordsmith in the realm. Working with these tools reminded me of what it was like to concentrate solely upon feeding the cold bite of metal upon my palm and the reverberation each pound of a mallet sends up my arm. It made me realize that, until now, my katana have been made with anxiety, a fear of being rejected, and not for the pure joy of the art. Father, I'm at a turning point. Now more than ever, your guidance is essential to my success. And I would like to reiterate my request to you. Please, I beg of you, take me on as your apprentice. You exhibit great dedication, but have always lacked the necessary focus and affection for this craft. Something which is reflected in your work. All your blades have been uninspired and lackluster. This katana, while far from acceptable, is different. You directed your undivided attention to its creation, rather than fixating on gaining my approval. In so doing, you have demonstrated you understand the essence of our art. I shall consider your request. W what? Truly? Do not get ahead of yourself. You must first prove your worth. I will have you compete against Desiree. Only if you win against her will I accept you. We shall return to Gagane, and there the two of you will face off to see who can make the better katana. Keep in mind, Saka, this shall be your last chance. Uh, pardon me, but I don't think I heard you right. You can't mean to say you're planning on stealing your best smithy and taking her to some distant country for a bloody competition we didn't even agree to. Father, I have no objection to those terms. Desiree, I know it's a lot to ask, but please, please, please... Will you do this for me? Alright, I'm in. Very good. I shall return to Kugani immediately to start on preparations for the impending match. I will see the three of you there. The three of you? Hold on, you don't mean to include me, do you? Wells. As Guildmaster, it's your duty to accompany your protégé and see that she performs to the very best of her ability. Now then, I believe I have a boat to catch. Till next we meet in Kugane. I shall be returning with my father. As we are adversaries now, I can no longer remain here at the guild. Forge Master Britain, Desiree, I suggest you brace yourself. I shall do everything in my power to win. Seven hells. Those two could give some of the fiercest pirates a run from their guild. <sighs> There's a lot that needs to be done here in the part. While I go and make sure things are in order, I expect you to be practicing. If we're crossing the five seas for this bleeding competition, you better be sure to win it. And the level 70 quest. You slept that? Kept you waiting, have I? Apologies. Seems I had myself one too many pints of ale last night. Don't worry, that's not going to keep me from traveling with you to the Far East. After all, Saka and Afawa still owe us a few trade secrets, and I have to see that they uphold their end of our bargain. Can't shake a feeling that unless she wins, they'll try and weasel their way out of it. 
Well, I suppose that's just a bridge we'll have to cross when we come to it. And for now, let's focus on making it to Gugana in time for the match. It's going to be a lot harder than it sounds. My head pounding and my stomach's churning. I don't think I've ever been so enthused by the idea of leaving Eorzea for distant lands. I'm going to have to take a moment to recuperate less. So, you go on ahead of me. I won't be too long. Give me what? To Kugane! Halfway across the world. Okay. Welcome to Kugane, Desiree. We received notice earlier that Fortune must return less shortly after you. I imagine he should be joining us soon. I feel like a totally different person to when I was last here. Where before I would buckle under the pressure of my father's unwavering gaze. Lately, I have not felt faced by it in the slightest. <laughs> but my apologies, I got off track again. Speaking of my father, he has asked that you meet him at Kokaiya, where craftsmen from the poorest to the finest gather in Kugane. There he will apprise you of the details of our upcoming match. I shall remain here to collect Fortune Master Brittle. Okay, Shinto. Desiree, you've come. Very good. Now, without further ado, allow me to explain what it is I would have of you. You and Seka are to each forge an Uchiga tunnel. These blades are to be shown to one of the greatest samurai families in Kugane. Their lord has interest in having my forge provide his retainers with katana. Before he officially entrusts me with his tasks, however, he asked that I provide him with a sample. The two of you will be competing to see which of your Uchigatana I would present before him. Oh, and one last thing. My daughter, she mentioned to me earlier that in exchange for studying at your guild, she promised to share with Master Britta the techniques we employ here at my forge. Her skills have grown exponentially under your care and, and I have every intention of upholding that agreement. But should you give any less than your best in the contest, and I know full well what you are capable of, consider our deal broken. If you have any questions, now would be a time to speak up. No? Excellent. In that case, I suggest you go and join Sekka at Pier 2. Your guildmaster will be arriving shortly. Um, sorry Desiree, do you have a moment? There's something I want to ask you before your guildmaster arrives. You see, every time Forge Master Brittle comes near, my heart feels like it will really explode and stop beating at the same time. Sometimes it's so painful I can scarcely breathe. At first I saw him as a dull and uninspired man. But then, when he so courageously defended my dreams and refused to back down even in the face of my father's fury, I realized I had misjudged him. In that moment, something inside me shifted. Now I cannot get his face out of my head, and I feel an inex inexplicable urge to be near him. I, I just don't understand. You supported me in my journey just the same, so why is it that I do not feel this way about you? Not my business, I don't have a clue. I expected as much. I suppose there's no way for you to know unless you could somehow see inside my head. I have a sneaking suspicion of what it might be, but um, never mind, it's far too absurd. Uh, what am I doing? Now's not the time for me to ask, to be asking silly questions. I need to prepare for what is arguably the most important moment in my career. Perhaps once this competition is over, we can revisit this conversation. What's this? My own personal work coming coming to come to escort me ashore? What's wrong, lass? Your beat is your red as a beat. W what are you talking about? My face is not wet. And even if it is, it's only because I'm so excited about my victory which looms on the horizon. <laughs> um alright then. You will see, I'm going to win. I've come a long way from when I first started. 
My travels to Eorzea, my studies at your guild, and the new tools the two of you made for me, they will lit a fire in my soul. They reminded me of how much I love making katana. This competition is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to seize my destiny. I will prove to father that I am worthy of studying under him. That girl is filled with an unrelenting passion for her craft. And she'll make a formidable opponent in the upcoming match. Has Shinto divulged any other details to you yet? And no Chigatana to be presented to one of the samurai families, eh? It goes without saying that the first thing they'll be looking at is the sharpness of the blade. But you'll also want a simple but elegant design for the hilt. But you already knew that, didn't you? I always forget you've outgrown me advice. Now, I've brought with me all the materials you might need. Here. Once they're done, take Ryoji Atana to the girl's father. Good luck there, Zoe, and remember, if you need anything, I'll be here. Let's craft the stuff in the forge. Right? Um, examination, Uchigatana. You have finished your Uchigatana? Very good. Saka is still working on hers, so I shall hold off on all critiques until she presents me with her blade. Desiree, this is beautiful. The radiance of his blade alone might be enough to repel the tides of chaos. In addition to that, it's so sharp it could cleave even a fine thread of hair in half. The sheath and the hilt have been done to perfection. This blade is fit to be worn at the hip of a great samurai. Besides, this brilliant Uchigatana is... Uh, what is this? Seka, you seem to have decided not to take this competition seriously. To the contrary, I have expended every last ounce of my skill and strength to create this. Please, feel for yourself. Take it in your, your hand and test it out. Kami. Saka, explain yourself. We were asked to make weapons for retainers, but not all of them can use weapons. Heavier blades may cut better, but they'd be useless in the hands of the untrained. These lighter substitutes, however, can be handled by even the clumsiest of servants. Even so, the reduced weight has come at the expense of a blade's overall quality. While you are not wrong in assuming that the great majority of the Lord's vessels are not adept at using katana, you were asked to forge a sample sword intended for one of his samurai. It does not take an expert to see that Desiree's blade is far superior to yours, not only in utility but also aesthetically. This is what I will be presenting to the samurai house. I will say, however, that taking a client's needs and physical limitations into consideration is a necessary part of our craft. Next time, be sure to consult me before jumping to your own conclusions. Next time? So, so that means... Where before you were pounding your hammer in a single-minded desperation to gain my favor, now we are no longer blind. 
You have shown extraordinary progress as a swordsmith, and I believe you are finally ready to begin your studies under me. Yeah, at last. Sounds to me like a dreams are about to become reality. Indeed, and I owe that in a large part to you. Thank you, Forge Master Brittell. Without your guidance, I wouldn't have been able to make it this far. You have been a great inspiration to me in more ways than you can imagine. I spent this entire time trying to convince myself the strange pressure I felt in my chest was due to the competition. Now it have been accepted as my father's apprentice, however, I can't deny it no longer. Watch, Master Britta, I think I'm in love with you. Uh, pardon me? Master Brutta, what exactly is the meaning of this? I thought my daughter was accepted to your guild, but you might exchange blacksmithing techniques, not vows. <laughs> I, uh, uh, my apologies, but well, something rather pressing just came up and it requires my immediate attention. Uh, Desiree, I see you back at the guild. I had not realized he was so shy. It almost makes him even more endearing. <laughs> Congratulations, Desiree. You have won the challenge. It seems there's a great deal we can learn from you and your guild. That reminds me, while Seca herself is still not in a place to take on such responsibility, I have every intention of seeing that our end of the agreement she struck is upheld. We look forward to exchanging smithing techniques with your forge. My father is right. For now I must focus solely on improving my skills. The Uchi Gatana I made for this competition was meant to be forged in the likeness of a lightweight short swords manufactured at your guild. It, however, turned out far inferior. I shall train unrelentingly. Perhaps one day, when I refine my skills to a point where I am worthy of being called a master swordsmith, I can then take on this duty and thus reignite the romantic spark between me and Forge Master Brittle. In the meantime, I shall keep my feelings for him sealed tightly away. I only hope that, as the days and months go by, you will not forget my love. Thank you for everything, Desiree. You are a wonderful person and an even better blacksmith. I won't be forgetting you anytime soon. Yes, it is as my daughter says. You have won our respect and our gratitude. Had it not been for you, Seka would not have grown as she has. That said, I suppose this is where we part ways. I'm sure that the lecture of a forge master is anxious to have you back. While your forge master may be something of a philanderer, I have no intention of going back on my word. I shall be sending words with one of my men soon. It's so clear to me now. I love him, Desiree. I really, really love him. Okay, back to Limsa with us. My apologies for having to leave here so abruptly back there, but by the look on the old man's face, I reckon I I'd overstayed my welcome. That's why you could imagine my surprise when Wentworth walked in with a letter from that very same man. 
While the whole thing was, of course, peppered with subtle threats, he seemed to be just as enthusiastic about the idea of trading smithing techniques with our guild as I am. Sir, I've just received another missive for you. It says here that it's from Seca. I'm not sure what it's for, but it must be important. It's nearly the size and length of the uh, new Eorzean Geographic. And where I thought was once so tired from sailing the sea, I'd be able to live out the rest of my days in peace. You gained the recognition of one of Kugana's foremost swordsmiths and in doing so have made a name for yourself in the Far East. Can't tell you how proud I am to have you in our guild. While I imagine it's time for you to embark upon your next grand adventure, do remember to come and visit our Britail from time to time, will you? Our oh, Facebook guild. Every day without sale, Selka will send me a love letter, each longer than the last. I've neither time nor the desire to respond. Every time I think about her, I'm forced to relive all those unpleasant memories of her staying here. That said, I can't very well ignore her for fear her father will decide to, to come here and personally settle what matter with me. <laughs> oh, poor Master Brittell. Good, but with that, I guess. I end this episode and next time we play more Final Fantasy XIV. Until then, I'm Mace and don't get lost. <laughs>